on the edge of space before time began. There was only the Hubverse. Sprocketeers avenged clarity. They dismantled obscurity. They danced when the flywheel spun. Here, we bring you the stories and the journeys to becoming the HubSpot Super Admin. Welcome to the Becoming a HubSpot Super Admin podcast, where we're championing the HubSpot Super Admin. We're here with Christina Kay. Christina, what is your spirit animal and why? My spirit animal is a dolphin because they are known for their helpful nature as well as their excellent communication skills. Helpful and communicative. Yeah. We've probably communicated more on Twitter than any other platform. Correct. <laughs> and yeah. it seems to be constant and yes. it seems to be value adding and encouraging. Yes, it is. It's very fun. People should go watch the conversation sometime. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, so Christina, tell us about your, uh, we want to start at the, at the now, and then we'll go back to the point of the arch and then we'll talk about in between. So just mm -hmm. give us kind of a brief on, uh, reseller rating, what it is you're doing there. Uh, so we yep. know where you're at right now. Cool. Yep. So at reseller ratings, I am the VP of marketing and at reseller ratings, what we do is power the voice of the consumer. So we really want to develop or we have these tools um, to reach, convert, and understand customers across their journey. And we use HubSpot really to help us navigate that for our marketing efforts. So people are going on to reseller ratings and they're rating products or rather... They're both. So they're rating like products and brands. So say... Um, the headphones you're wearing, whatever company those headphones are, you could go to, I can't see Monster. it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can't see it. <laughs> Which one? Um, it's, you, so you go onto like, you can search Monster in our little like search bar on the homepage and you can review the brand or the product specifically. Um, but also what the big thing is, a lot of our customers have our widgets or our um, code on their site. So if you shop online, which I'm sure you do, or someone in your family, I'm sure does, mm -hmm. um, there's rating reviews on products. And that is what we do in a bulk. But then we have social Q&A and visual marketing and feedback and Q&A, things like that. So, um, but yeah, so we started as a forum for the retail space and then kind of grew from there and really honed in on that UGC for um, our clients because really... The customer's voice is super important, especially now, um, building trust because right, right. people sometimes right. don't trust a brand saying, oh, we're the best, obviously. <laughs> you hear from <laughs> Everyone's people. the best. And that like is a testament to even like, I mean, if you think of it and go back to like HubSpot, HubSpot has this group of community people that really are those big quote unquote cheerleaders of the brand. And um, it's created a huge thing, I think, in my opinion. And it's a trust factor. Right, right. And that's what we're all about. Reading what other people say about it, what their experience has been, exactly. creates that trust. Yep. Love it. And so yeah. could I generalize you as like telling the story of creating that trust? Um, how would you, your role would, uh, at Resell oh, Ratings. Specific. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, for us, it's really getting that feedback from the customer. Um, it's not just about, hey, this is our new product. Um hope you like it, you know, like in a uh, little pop up or something. Right, right. It's more about what do you want to change or is there something to change or really getting those um, champions within our customers to give us that feedback because otherwise we're going to keep going what we think is best for the company or best for our customers. Right, right. And you could go blindly into that and it could either go really great or like not great because there are a lot of people, if, if you've been around, like the company's been around for a bit, you're going to have people that like love you or really hate you or just like don't know about you really. So you do want to talk about all three of those because each of those, each of those people, you're going to learn something from to one, help execute your communication about trust, but also um, combat some things that maybe have happened in the past. And you can really like face it first and talk through it and then like guide them through that journey. Because I feel the 
pandemics really helped us in the sense of humanizing ourselves as well as empathy. And those two things in any brand, whether that be a lip gloss brand or a coffee brand or tech, Mm -hmm. it's all about um, being, and I'm sorry if you heard you heard that, my dog snoring loudly. <laughs> it's all about being just human. Obviously, me being human is my dog snoring as I'm talking. Very but, human. Um, human and authentic because people can read through the BS. Right. Um, I mean, and it's easier to do now, I feel, because you have had to be kind of not alone, but kind of alone for so long. And then you learn your own self-awareness and then you're going to also expand that to other things. And that's going to reflect in your work life and then as well as building or making your brand more trusted and just developing that as well. It's so true. It It's so true. Mm-hmm. You, you, you know, you can go into some place and you can mask it for so long. But I mean, the human is going to come out. You're not mm-hmm. getting away from that. Oh, no. Mm-mm. So you're we make mistakes. <laughs> right. Yeah. I love that you're eating your, your own dog food in the sense of asking your own customers about how you're doing. You're building the yep. trust with them that you're listening in the first place by asking questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, we've even learned that too from like our resale writings as a whole, like our journey has been pretty um, crazy. And just recently, the past mm-hmm. two years, our CEO, CRO bought the company back from our parent company. Mm-hmm. So we're also like reestablishing ourselves in, in a sense. Sure. Um, but we've been around for a while. So we're this like, two-year-old startup right but with an active client base with like all of that that a startup normally doesn't have you know like right income coming in that's not an investor yeah but it's an interesting thing for us to see like oh some of our customer maybe one person didn't get talked to for so long like no wonder why they're pissed yeah like, you know, right. I'm too. like right. you know like <laughs> no like there's just things that's like and i know it's so um little in a sense but not really because That person, especially in the world or the brands that we work with a lot, or just like the industry, people who are in retail, anything like that, they're going to go to another retail brand. Like that's just like how it is like in tech or anything like that. You're probably, if you've established yourself in that, you're going to go to that Mm -hmm. and they're going to remember you. And that's like what I don't want. Like, I don't want people to have like, even if they leave us, like, I don't want like a bad taste. I want to be like, Hey. I'd love to talk to you. And it's not like a sales conversation. No, no, it's no. not like our CRO or director of sales. It's maybe me or even our CEO or somebody even on the product team, like bringing them in because having them hear it too, it's like, oh, it could spark ideas. But that not only builds trust, but it also builds that seed in someone's head to come back to you eventually because they're going to be like, oh, wow, this other our competitor like doesn't do that. Like, But they really do care and they could see the changes maybe that they helped implement because let's be real. If you're a person like me, who a lot of people are this way, um, <clears throat> if you suggest something on a product and then you see it happening, you're like, Oh yeah, yeah. I did great. That like, was you me. know, like, right. He's <laughs> like, turn off your shoulders. You're like, Oh yeah. Got it. So I feel like that's, and people love that, you yeah. know, and I want to have Agreed. give people those feelings. So love that. I, uh, uh, you said it so eloquently that you're, you're being empathetic towards them and you're planting the seed regardless if they stay with you or not. You're mm-hmm. doing right by you. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. So then so then that's where we're at at this point in time. Let's mm-hmm. go back to the beginning of this this arc that we're currently on of Christina yep. K. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what sparked your HubSpot life? Yeah, so... I was, so I feel like once upon a time when Christina <laughs> was 18 years old, basically what it is actually too, but um, it was in um, 08. So right when, Hub, when HubSpot really was starting, um, I took a tour of an agency. It was my junior year of college. So I graduated high school when I was like 16. So that's, this is why age is a little weird for mm-hmm. that. But, um, and I took a tour of this agency and they were kind of talking about HubSpot and like Google Analytics and all this kind of like stuff and I was like I wonder what that is you know so then I just put it in my cap I guess you could say to kind of look back on Mm -hmm. and then in 2009 I think 2008 around that area is when I first got my like first login to like HubSpot (laughs) and that was basically when it was 
like email. You're like an OG. Like that. I know, an OG. I am so mad about that because I had all this old swag and I can't find it. I have one at the HubSpot Academy one from like 2000. When it was very early. It's rusted. Like that is how old it is. Okay. <laughs> like, it is very vintage. Yes, okay. I yes. can probably put that on Twitter and make some money. Make actually. some money at it. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joking. But um, so yeah. And then from there, I worked at different um, HubSpot customers. And then I went back to the agency side. I worked at one of their um, like diamond. I don't know. At the time there was not diamond. It was whatever it was the time yeah, yeah. now there's like there's like so elite there's so many things okay. now you know so so let's stick with your where you were you you mm-hmm. went to an agency so this wasn't you didn't go to a hubspot office you mm-hmm. went to an agency that was using hubspot correct yep and correct. and you literally toured so in the time of pandemic it's funny to look back like i went to a physical place yep and this was a while ago right and yeah i toured it and the funny thing is is so this person he um was one of hubspot's first partner agencies wow and um i still and it's such a such a full circle situation for me right now with it is because that agency is in the same building that i work in now wow 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 right was that in cleveland like too above. yeah okay mm-hmm. yeah so this agency and was so- in cleveland you're still there now in Cleveland, yeah. Like, I just came back to Cleveland three years ago, I think. Um, so I was, bop, like, bopping around from customer to HubSpot agency when I was in Florida for a little bit. And I just really love in-house side. Um, and I actually helped an agency become a HubSpot partner in, like, 2014, I think. Yeah. And, um, no, 15. Because 14, yeah, it was 2015. <laughs> and... Yeah, because 14, I lived in Dubai. So that's a whole other story. And I, that was a year without HubSpot. That's, I feel like that was like, no. uh, I feel like <laughs> that's a book. You know, I should write a right, book, right. A Year Without HubSpot. Or like a like a kid's book, you know. <laughs> but um, So it w- so, really was the tour that kicked it all off. and Yeah, and it was just what he said about it and things like that. And then I started reading more about it. I read like one of the first like um, books that I think Brian wrote, like Brian Darmesh maybe. And it was like, it was like that turquoise, turquoise color, I think. Yeah, yeah. And then there was an orange one. I'm not sure which one came first, but um, so that. And then I did do a brief stint of drinking the purple Kool-Aid. And that was, when I say brief, that was like six months. And I said, mm, I mm-hmm. said, I, no, I, and I was like, HubSpot is my blood. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is better for me. So love it. Um, you bleed orange now. So I, yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, it, yeah. So that is. It's been a long journey, and I love seeing how HubSpot has just changed in ways, um, how I've seen them grow. You know, it's kind of like seeing the kid, in a sense, <laughs> grow right, because right. going from – and even, like, I have some, like, old Snapchat, like, videos of me, like, working on my workflows, you know, <laughs> and stuff like that. I was like, what was I trying to flex at that point? <laughs> you know, it's cool. My audience was like, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> what is but, this? And why are you showing us? <laughs> yeah, like, okay. Uh, it's like, know your own audience, Christina. But and so, cool. um, okay. So you're taking yeah. the tour of this agency. Why did you yeah. take this tour? Did someone well, um, invite you? Or are you trying like to work a, there? Yeah. So it was like a um, tour that one of the associations, I think it was like AMA. It might've been PRSA mm-hmm. or like AAF. One of those, you know, associations that were doing tours for um, internships and like entry level jobs or whatever. So, um, I, you were in college at the time. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and what was your major then? PR, public relations. PR. And marketing. Because mm-hmm. you've been to college yep. multiple times. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> All the degrees. All the degrees. <laughs> so PR, and then, marketing, and then AMA mm-hmm. or some sort of agency had That's this kind a, of yeah, walkthrough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and you said, That's all right. That's where it started. Let me go, let me go learn and about this thing. Yeah, and I, I remember, like, talking to my parents about, like, HubSpot, like, because the name is different, you know? It's, like, right. fun, and they're like, what what is this? Like, you know, and so it's funny. It's, it's like being in marketing or any type of PR, marketing, com, whatever. It's funny to always explain, not always, but try to explain what you do mm-hmm. to people who, like, don't know, you know? And then having the name HubSpot, they're like, what, what is this, Christina? You know? And There's so, a lot of things I'm not familiar yeah. with. 
<laughs> my family's been part of that journey because all I talked about was HubSpot when I was like getting like into my career. And it's funny to um, just see it all go full circle and have like the mm-hmm. case study that was just published like a couple weeks ago and the video was done. I mean, the video was published last week and it's just so weird. i um, not weird, but kind of, I feel good about myself, like from that whole like HubSpot journey, you know, yeah. because it's, um, I feel me being that, like my MBA is in analytics. So I love that side of right, right. Um, anything really. You're able to talk then, that, that BI mm-hmm. analytics stuff. Exactly. But then also like my MySpace, like love comes back <laughs> in for like the code part of it. You know? And Did so your then, about me section have flickering colors across exactly it? Exactly. Stars and some music in the background, you know, is great. And those like little character things, oh, like man. being like all sassy. That was definitely <laughs> me for sure. I'm so happy I deactivated it years ago, but I'm also happy. I'm also sad that I did because I would love to, I would be like, oh my God. <laughs> And like my top five, people were like pissed if they weren't in it or something. Oh, get in my top five. I don't know right. if my AOL Instant Messenger, my AIM still works or not, but they were the same mm-hmm. name. So I would love to oh, try really? and log in. That's I know fun. MySpace is still a thing. Oh, it is still a thing. It's mostly for music now, yeah, yeah. which is like awesome. Um, but so yeah, kind of HubSpot for me, like combines all of that together in the sense of like my analytics side, how I like to explore with like code and developing stuff. But then obviously that creative marketing um, piece that really drives it for me. Um, and now you can just really combine them all. Like, cause before there was, you, there was limitations on things and just like any software has with just right. growing. And now it's just, it's a beast. And I right. love that because I remember always being like, pro like HubSpot in the sense of even when the CRM like first started, but like I can't, I kind of feel like it always had a CRM in a sense, but it wasn't really labeled that. Sure. And so I kind of was like, we could use this, like we're a small company, da da, but they always had to have like an actual like CRM, you know, and there's things now that I, I love, um, I love not, I shouldn't say fighting. That is not the word I want I'm looking for, <laughs> but like deflecting, I guess you can say. Deflecting. Um, some things that people like don't know. Um, and I feel that's the biggest part of even like HubSpot um, for a lot of the things they do um, because. Right, right. Just don't educating know don't others. Know. Yep. Yeah, yeah. They think it's just what it was 10 years ago and it's right. very much not that. Um and I was talking to um, Dan from HubSpot last week, uh, and I was joking with him about when HubSpot had their CMS BCOS. And I remember <laughs> always being on calls. I was at an agency at the time and explaining what that actually was. Yeah. And I'm like, it's, I was like, I'm just going to call it HubSpot, like website or something. Because Can you just explain like, to us what, what this, this thing is? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I always joked about it. Because, um, I mean, that's obviously they changed it back. Yeah. You know, but that's just a thing to learn from a global, humongous, least successful company that mistake. Not mis- not saying that was a mistake. That is not what I'm saying. It's like a sidestep. Like, it just didn't, like, land. It's not bad. Exactly. It just didn't land. Yeah, exactly. And now yeah. that it just has changed to what it is in a sense, you know, of saying like what the norm, the industry calls it. Right. It probably helps SEO obviously, but two, it's just standardized and people, right. It's, it's a common thing now, you know, instead of this (laughs) new thing, instead of like thinking it's a different, different something else or something like that. Yeah, 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 exactly. All right. So we have where you're at. We heard about the agency and coming on. Talk to us about some of those points in between. You alluded to Dubai and a customer yeah. and partner side. What are some, yeah. as you reflect back, milestones in between mm-hmm. the, the arch of, of your HubSpot life? Yeah, I feel like. Um, oh, the dogs want to chime in. I know they really do. <laughs> They've been around for it all basically. So, <laughs> but it was minus like two years of it. But um, they even have HubSpot um, dog collars. Okay. So. Okay. Okay, HubSpot. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> but um, my whole family is obsessed. It works. <laughs> but um, I feel like my milestones really come from. I don't. I feel. In this is going to sound probably weird. 
But my milestones come from educating people on HubSpot and seeing them either get a new job because of the Mm -hmm. HubSpot Academy or um, because of me helping them figure out how to do custom objects and API stuff. And it really helped their business. Like there's things like, you know, that's so weird to say those are milestones for me. not at all. I mean, brag on yourself about those people that, wow, I Mm -hmm. made this, I helped this company go from 5 million to 10 million because they had these sequences. And it's, and it's crazy um, to, to like see for me, even how my knowledge has expanded from being in this like HubSpot universe, I guess you could say, Um, because it's challenged me um, in the sense of leveling up to different people, you know, or learning different things or getting out of my comfort zone and allowing people to be like, wow, Christina, this was really great. Like, let me get some of your brain in a sense, you know, right. like brain and so as you're educating and sharing, it sounds mm-hmm. like you're starting to see the patterns of what people say is helpful. And then yep. maybe some anomalies of something that's random that either is helpful mm-hmm. or not. Yep, exactly. So your like, experience in finding like, those patterns, did you start then at an agency? Um, with HubSpot or with like HubSpot? in general? Yeah, yeah. Um, did I start? I started... Uh, I think, yeah, an agency. I started an agency. So an agency and that then, was using HubSpot to correct. service like their clients. Partner. Okay. Yep, exactly. And then it went um, in-house. And that was, um, and I switched so during, <laughs> I've done this, <laughs> I feel like, through my whole career. And my CRO is going to listen to this and be like, oh, okay, this makes more sense. We didn't but, know that. Um, <laughs> I think, so I, like, basically, because I helped, not helped, mm, during my interview of this one company I work for, I convinced them to switch from Eloqua to HubSpot. And then I got, um, like, I got the job, essentially. And then that was my first job to do. Okay. And then day one of the company I'm at now, that was like, yo, we're going to be getting off the blue guys and we're going to be going over to HubSpot CRM. <laughs> and our CRM was like, and no. <laughs> like, he was like, no. Like, you know, who is this chick? Like, who I yeah. her? Like, you did actually, but it's fine. <laughs> you know? Hello. But um, I slowly kind of, not taught him, but was dropping little like buckets. Buckets? Wow. But that was buckets and nuggets together. So drop <laughs> those think nuggets buckets and some buckets. Are okay, better we'll do things that. to drop. <laughs> it's like now I want chicken McNuggets, goodness. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I'm not kidding, <laughs> I do too. <laughs> if I had some nuggets right now, I wouldn't be mad. Right? It would be really great. You know, it's we'd be smiling. It's good. Um, <laughs> so you just dropped him hints of correct. things he could be doing. With HubSpot? Yeah, or like that HubSpot can do. Because his biggest concern was some of the reports or things like that. And then I showed yeah. him some of the reports that HubSpot can do that the other ones could not do. Or showing some revenue forecasting that we never been able to have yeah. until we switch. You know, so like different things like that. My CEO was like totally bought in. When I told him I wanted to do this, he was like, good luck, but let's do it. But we right. also have to get like um, Brad, our CRO, on it. And so now... He is, it's, this is the part when, this is one of my milestones. And I know this is again about someone else besides me, but well, kind of, I have to, I have to do with the milestone, I guess, is he is creating these amazing like sequences, these amazing reports within um, HubSpot. And I was like, I'm just so proud of him. Like it just <laughs> makes me so happy. It just, You're doing it just so, good. so good. Right. I'm like tearing up, you know, it's like I'm so, so bad. I'm like, Right, I'm like, I'm just so like happy about it because it just shows one. I mean, it was it was like hard work, obviously, to migrate. Yeah, from Salesforce, but uh, I mean, how he's really adapted and just like owned it, and yeah. he's done so like, amazing things that for me, that's just a huge, um, a, a huge thing. You know, and that's a testament to obviously from my years of just right. HubSpot knowledge. I mean, in other tech, like I can speak to like other um, systems like HubSpot and other right. ones, but it's really, and it's also the language that you kind of have to talk to different levels or mm-hmm. um, titles with for that because sure. they care about different things. 
You have to um, translate your knowledge exactly. to the audience you're speaking to, whether it's someone yep. who's using it day-to-day -day sales or someone who's implementing it and reporting in the C-suite. Yep. yep, exactly. So it's, and it's fun, I feel, to, um, to do that. And I feel like it also challenges me um, to use my brain in different ways. It, it is so obvious that you have, when, when you go into an organization and you're just draw a hard line, we're switching. <laughs> yeah. One, like you said, you have experience with the other ones, mm -hmm. and there's many, yeah. of knowing the pros and cons. And mm -hmm. in your Venn diagram, in your mind's Venn diagram, HubSpot is the winner. Yeah. Then also, like you're saying, though, to understand the hubs, understand the use cases, understand mm -hmm. the reporting and the sequences, not to just go in and say, I think this blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. It's based on my experience. I've mm -hmm. been able to use this tool in so many ways and its effectiveness is what I'm telling you we need to be doing. <laughs> I want yep. this effectiveness for our organization. Yep. Because I hear like the pain points, I, I see our goals, then I just map it to that. And I mean, in a sense of, even financially having only really bought, like paying one vendor in a sense, we have like more than one, but I'm saying it's a lot easier than that. Yeah. Yeah. All of that planning. It's just in so many other areas I feel. And it's just for me, my biggest, my biggest thing with um, just bringing my journey all together is I always thought I was just going to be like a, fun little marketer which like i'm fun and i'm little i'm short so i guess that works but like <laughs> it's, my favorite part is the op side of it you know and that really becoming that because sales i mean salesforce admin certification is one of the like, hardest one hardest tests i've ever taken in my life honestly mm -hmm. i'm not i'm talking about mba and everything like that was probably mm -hmm. the most hardest test i've taken ever and that HubSpot in a sense is like leveling up to that. It's so huge. And for me, it just, I'm very happy because it's going to be, I know there's going to be more to come down the road, you know, but right. I'm really happy to be part of that because HubSpot's allowed me to become smarter. And I know it sounds so weird, but I really thought I was um, just like, again, like that creative, fun little marketer, which is like great. But it really has like, taught me to do like different things and helped me because it, they made it easy. Yeah. They made it like simple and like broke it down. Right. And like their dev docs, their um, just like their help docs in general, it just makes it digestible and it's not overwhelming. And I feel that's what's helped me grow with my HubSpot journey because they just make it for people, like for humans, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's not maybe not it could be not the developer. Or because I feel those, like your developer, your brain's de like it's built differently than mine, you know. And I feel it gets people to a chance to be able to flex that side of their brain, right? Um, and or teach them how to. Because I mean, the HubSpot community, I um reached out once. I was like having I wanted to learn about like the APIs more, and I reached out to somebody that I saw on the Slack like dev channel or something, and they yeah. helped me so much. And I was like, a lot of communities don't actually have that you know um right. and i think right. that's super special about the hubspot community and i think that's why I, I dove in so long ago because i like that sense of being i like that sense of community because without that i feel like no one's going to grow and the company's not probably going to grow either because your customers aren't going to be like advocates like they are they have them you know so mm -hmm. they did something great with that well said <laughs> well said christina and I didn't even talk about Dubai. You talked to me. I said that, and I was like, and I totally went the other direction. But I can go ahead and talk about that. If well, you let's want. talk about some people. Talk to it. So again, in between these goalposts, mm -hmm. on the arch of your HubSpot life, who are some of the people that were either a mentor, right, or just an influence who influenced you in a positive way or helped you uh, course correct the direction you're on? Yeah. Um, Goodness, there's so many people because I feel like I've had so many different paths that I've like taken, um, but also just places I've lived um, and things like that. But I would say, honestly, I mean, to start, my parents obviously have been very influential with me in my life because they are both um, educators. They have spoken okay. at conferences all over. And 
So I've, I saw that my whole life. And I mean, I start every session that I speak at with conferences with this song that they always started their sessions with. Um, and so it's, it, for me, it's like, it's funny, but people like laugh because marketers are like, what are we doing? Like, you know, <laughs> what is happening? Like, um, <laughs> right. And, but they're like energized after that because sometimes conferences, especially if it's like an after lunch session or something, yeah. you know, or even early in the morning, you're like, I don't want to be here or you're just tired. So you got to do something to get up and going, yeah, you know, you so got to get them. Even, exactly. Yeah. You get their attention. So they've inspired me like through that and just having, um, that be a thing Can that I hear could the do, song? you know? Um, so <laughs> I'm not going to sing this right now, but, um, you know, the song, you know, the song, like my Bonnie lives out, my Bonnie lives over the mm-hmm. ocean. Okay. Lies. So the thing is, is every B you either stand up or sit down. So it'd be like my Bonnie lives over the ocean and then you sit down. My Bonnie lives over the sea. My Bonnie lives over the ocean. Oh, bring back my Bonnie to me. So you like do exactly. And then it's like bring back. Bring back, oh, bring back my bond. So there's a lot of bees at the end. It's fun. People are laughing. And then some people are up. Some people are down. So you really see who, one, has rhythm mm-hmm. and two, who's just... So it's a lot of fun to, like, watch it, you know? <laughs> but people are having fun and they laugh. And then it's, Love like... It. And then it's a session, you know? So... And it's a nice way for everyone to get involved without you like, all right, count off by five and then we'll group up. Exactly. And... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good call. Exactly. Um, but other people that have influenced me, can... I have so many, honestly. Yeah. Pick, um, pick one but... or two and tell us the story of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So one of them is someone that I reached out to. Uh, when I lived in Florida, because she spoke at an AMA event, um, it's Mary Rodriguez. She's the time I think she was the like lead storyteller for Microsoft, mm-hmm. and um, she's been with Microsoft for a while. Interesting and just title. Her, yeah, and she. So I think she like kind of made that title because she she's just it's a, this is why she's an inspiration and just like a mentor to me. But she just has this way of making. Sh- making people uh change not change but like her storytelling helps people realize that bigger picture you know or seeing that this i am an apple girl so me even saying this is a lot but like the microsoft like service like can help people in all these different countries and build their businesses and like all these things like that Mm -hmm. you know and she's just an inspiration for so many other things because i feel as a female in the tech industry you are supposed to be this like certain way or like look a certain way right. and say certain things, but she's like, so herself all the time. And I like, love it. Like she posts on LinkedIn sometimes about her, like doing yoga or her like out with friend. Like there's so many things that just show her being human that I feel not only helps her like personal brand. Cause she does like speak a lot at conferences, but just helps her, the brand she works for, you mm-hmm. know, helps them saying, okay, because She's herself and it's not like they're saying, oh, you shouldn't post that or you shouldn't do this. Like she's just so authentically herself and my dog is snoring so loud right now. <laughs> authentically herself and just she's. And you love that about her. And it just for me, it gives me that I can do that. And I'm still getting um, I not I don't do it all the time, you know, and I'm trying to definitely be more my authentic self all the time because I am like fun and goofy and things like that um and I try to have that portrayed but sometimes you want to be like oh you know just accept Um, that space and live in that space and and be transparent with the space you live in yep because I I heard yeah Christina it's so important (laughs) yeah (laughs) because it's not not, oh sorry go ahead yeah no please please (laughs) I was going to say, because if not, like if, if you're truly thinking about it in that way of a place you work or people you're friends with, and if they're judging you or don't like something like that's not healthy because you only really have one life to live and it is the worst if you don't are not like true to yourself. And that does take time to even realize what that is because yeah. you probably brainwashed your own self throughout childhood and like peer pressure and things like that. Um, but I feel like the time we live in it's more accepted to be yourself which sounds awful that it's taken so long and we still have long ways yeah. to go with it but we're at our point that i feel like this pathway of people like miri 
are really blazing for females in tech, especially, but anybody, like anybody really can just be their like authentic self. Cause no one has time to like <laughs> do that. You no, know? to make and up a persona, know all of exact, the truths and lies. Exhausting. Yeah, exactly. It's exhausting. <laughs> just easier to be yourself. No one else is you. Right? I like walked into the office one day. Um, cause we are like hybrid. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we have a lot of us are remote, but I like going into the office right now. I'm at my house. This is not what our office looks like, <laughs> but, um, it's very Christine. It's very girly. It's, it's my house. But, um, he, I like said something. I'm not going to say what I said. Cause it is like a lot of F bombs and stuff, but I walked in and I did not know our CRO was there. And he, I was like, Oh my God. Like he was like, Christine, he's like, I love the way you talk. It just so like, authentic. I'm like, Oh my God. I was like, I'm yeah. so yeah. I was like, Oh my God. It was just so funny. Cause it was like super hot in there. And I was like, just saying something about that. And it was a lot, but, um, that's like, if I, I feel like if I would have been somewhere else, it would have probably gone differently, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but it's yeah, just talking to, I think that's exactly. And I think it's so correct. It, I roll. <laughs> it's so important. Um, other people for me that have just been inspirations. Um, uh, so like Jen Spencer at um, Smart Bug, she's like one of my mentors. And I actually met her for the first time in person last week at the B2B MX conference. Congrats. That's fun. Yeah, it's so fun. Yeah, it was just so like, and I didn't even really know. Like I saw her on the um, the agenda, yeah. but I didn't... Um, because some people were doing it virtually, some were not. But then right. I remembered she lived in that area. So I was like, maybe. But then, of course, our sessions were at the exact same time. And I was like, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, you yeah. Know, of course, this would happen. But um, there's, sh- there's so, a whole yeah. book or website, Christina, and we were talking earlier about this, of the <laughs> I met you online and I know you that way. But then I actually met you in person. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just the exactly. story of those meetups. Yes. Uh. It's so fun. It's really cool to um, just have that be a thing or being able to be a thing, you know? Um, and she's just an inspiration for so many things for me. Um, and it was really humbling in a sense, not humbling, but like really cool to see her talk. This is going to sound really weird. Talk about me to someone. Mm -hmm. Um, just cause it's nice to hear what your like mentor or someone you really respect thinks about you, you know? Right. Um, And she talked a lot about HubSpot and she talked a lot about how I made all these like process documents for like RevOps for um, the switch over from whatever CRM you're on. But this one spe- that was, it's really geared towards like Salesforce HubSpot, but you, it probably could be translated to uh, like dynamics and things like that, mm-hmm. but um, everything like that. And then she like told me, she's like, yeah, when she was like introing me to someone she works with, she's like, this is the girl that I sent you the um, case study on. And I was like, Oh my gosh! I was like, "This is still you're special. talking about me." That's me. No, I was like, "Goodness." Like, um, yeah, I was like, "Who? <laughs> what?" You know, I was like, "Who are you talking about?" It is so like interesting that? to hear other people mm-hmm. talk about you mm-hmm. in this sort of way, right? We're not, we're not talking about the oh, they're talking about me in the yeah, yeah, yeah. We work together. Uh, intros to partners or clients, or mm-hmm. especially a mentor. And the things uh-huh. you've gone through together, but then for them to verbalize it to someone else, mm-hmm. how powerful is that to hear it? it yeah. Yeah. Amazing. It, it That's was, cool. Yeah, it was really awesome. And I mean, for me, it, me being the person I am, I was like, now I want to be better. Like, you know, like, yeah. I'm just like that because I just compete with myself basically um, because there's for me, there's no one else to compete with because I don't really i just like want everybody to win and i don't i don't mean that by like fluffy by means but everybody's definition of winning and their finish line or where they want to be is different than than anybody and their steps to get there are different love it (laughs) that is a great segue to 10 years from now christina so there's this woman out there she exists Mm -hmm. 10 years from now and she's got some things going on she's doing some stuff Mm -hmm. what does she say to current christina what is she Mm -hmm. talking about and what does she say yeah. Um, I would say that first I would say that I w- I'm proud of her. I'm proud of her for standing up for what she believes in, being vocal about things like that. Um, but in the sense, uh, are you asking, sorry, are you asking like what she's doing or what, what she's doing? Okay. Yeah. What so, she's doing or what mm-hmm. she wants you to know about where she's yeah, at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I would say 
10 years from now, Christina will probably be consulting for businesses. Um, HubSpot probably specifically or tech um things like that mm-hmm. uh and traveling the world like i wanna like i just want to live everywhere you know yeah, yeah. live that like nomadic life mm-hmm. um and so my goal i guess maybe to learn another language so then i can help people with hubspot in a different language uh-huh. um and then i think it'd be cool to 10 years from now I am big into tech in general, STEM, and, like, females in that world. So maybe if there's, like, a nonprofit that I'm, at the time, 10 years from now, like, right now I would have one that I would do this for, but um, that I would just, I would pay for, like, their tech stack. Yeah, um, yeah. And just do that for them. I feel like that would be definitely a 10 years from now, Christina, thing. <laughs> um, but I would, I would say what I would tell myself now my 10 year old, my 10 year old, 10 year old, 10 year oh from now, 10 self? year from now, self, my 10 year old self, not that <laughs> I'm like, I'm going back in time. So, yeah. But, um, words are hard sometimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would just say, keep going. Um, sometimes I feel in like work life, like professional life or personal life, right. it's, you get lost in a lot of stuff, but start writing down things that you're grateful for every day. And accomplishments that you're proud of, because sometimes I get into my own head like, oh, my gosh, I've not accomplished something this month. Like, you know, because I'm that I'm just that person. But if I look back, my friends are like, Christina, are you effing serious? You've been doing <laughs> like, a lot. You, I was like, you shut up, you know, I'm like, yeah. but for me, you kind of forget about it because you could be someone's role model without knowing. Like, you know, you could be that person because. Yes. Of, of LinkedIn, of Twitter, of anything. Like, you don't know. Right. Um, so I kind of got to show up for them, but show up for myself. And um, that's what really, like, my goal is. But also helping people along the way. <laughs> show up for them and show up for myself. It's such a simple mm-hmm. concept. And it's so easy yep. to say. And in practice, it can it can, it can balloon into such complexity sometimes. Oh, yeah. <sighs> oh, yeah. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's so crazy. And I mean, it's, but it's the thing is I do have to remind yourself, like myself, and I feel like everybody should remind themselves like every day, like show up for you, show up for people who you don't even know who are looking up at you, you know, cause you really don't know. Like I have some people randomly message me on and like LinkedIn and things like that, that they saw something on about me and they were, I'm like, goodness, like. I used to like, I mean, I, it's just so funny to me that I am that to someone mm-hmm. um, and that feels special and it's humbling, but it also makes me want to work, work harder, work harder. Um, so, cause it's not like, Oh, I'm done. Like, you know, right, like that's right. not my personality. So. Well, on that, Christina, where can people find you online? Yeah. Well, you can find me and Grant talking a lot on Twitter. <laughs> um, <laughs> my name on Twitter is Christina K. So my first and last name. And then LinkedIn, um, again, Christina K. And if you want to know my adventures like traveling, you can do Instagram. But that's, again, Christina K. So it is very, well, it's the Christina K, like Ohio State. But... <laughs> yeah. All the profiles so, are similar. That's so helpful. Oh, you're. Mm. I've been fighting for my actual name on Instagram because it's like one person posted like (laughs) 15 years ago, I swear, and they've not posted since. And I'm like, oh my gosh. But (laughs) it's fine. That's why I had to be V, but it's cool. All right, HubSpot HubSpot super admins, go find Christina K on Twitter, LinkedIn. And if you want to follow her travels, the (laughs) Christina K on Instagram. Yes, yes. Thanks so much for sharing your story with us, Christina. Thank you for your time, Grant. It was fun. Good. I had fun, too. There's a, a lot to even go into in uh, maybe some later episodes of your stories yes. and, and the people. Yes, um, agreed. Tell us, agreed, are you agreed. a HubSpot super admin? Of course. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Take care. Thank you so much. Becoming the HubSpot Super Admin Podcast is available at HubSpotSuperAdmin.com or wherever you get your podcast.